So before we jump into the conversation um, here with Kevin and I, I want you guys to think about, take a few seconds and think about what you visualize when you hear the word ego. So that's what Kevin and I get into this week. It's so awesome to be back recording our podcast. Um, So we're going to dive into the conversation of your ego. All right, so this week we're talking about the ego. And in so when I first started thinking about, okay, this is what this is what we're going to talk about. Um, I had this visual in my head plane of what I visualize when I think about the word ego. Um, so before we get into any details, Kev, first I want to know what do you what do you visualize? Like what do you see when you think of the word ego? Well, when the word ego gets presented, I I usually think of um, like emotions attached to the word. So um, I think of um, conflict. So I I usually think of like a general conflict and on one side of the conflict is an irritation. Um, Hmm. But then I also think about um, the other side, which is um, just somebody who is like getting in their own way. So that could be two things to like that go two ways in a conflict so like if you put it into a real life story you could say like um you're at a you're at a this is just so you're at a grocery store (laughs) you're uh you're both reaching for a bag of peas okay and it's a lot and you really like peas and you're both are you with someone you know sorry two people okay don't even know like you just both at the same time grab for a bag of peas and one of those people notices it and snatches it up right away. Mm. And the other one is a little bit like, oh, like meek about the whole thing. And uh, and to me in that conflict, it's um, like it's a parent who has an ego. Um, so, so I'll ask you a question. If that's – and the, like if they yeah. those two people had words and it escalated, whatever, but – um, that's the situation that sparked it. Which which person to you would have the ego in that situation? Well, is it the last bag of peas? That doesn't matter with <laughs> ego. <laughs> um, I immediately off the top of my head, to be honest, I think of the person who reached quicker and was like, I want the fucking bag of peas. Right. Yeah. That's what most people, mm-hmm. admit. most mm-hmm. people would say they have a big ego, that person. Right. Um, to me, um, everybody has an ego. Um, we can explore that more later, but, um, so they both have an ego and if there is a conflict that arises from that, um, not saying that ego causes conflict, like a lot of other things do, but if they have a conflict that arises from that, <coughs> um, e- ego is usually at the center of it, mm-hmm. um, in a situation like that, like the, uh, the guy who grabbed the peas instantly, like before the other person could, just think they're more important maybe and and they have like a inflated sense of who they are because they need the peas yeah and the other person doesn't need the peas as much as they do <laughs> um but maybe they have like kids at home where they're trying to feed and it's beyond themselves and we don't know the whole backstory so yeah. <laughs> maybe that isn't actually the person with the ego and maybe the other and this is the harder one for people to to perceive but the meeker person who noticed and like kind of held back a bit um maybe it was her ego that caused her to hold back because, Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people have a hard time seeing that one. But, um, when we look at what an ego actually is, you can start to see, okay, yeah, like she's just in her own way. Like, um, her, her meekness is like a a cause of her, her ego. Right. So, so what do you picture? So, um, so what I picture, so when I first started thinking of this, um, my visual is very different than <laughs> yours, um, but I, I, I'm sitting there and I visualize broad shoulders, arrogance, like walks into a room chewing gum and just, um, just kind of storms into space um, and isn't conscious or um, aware of other people. But at the same time, they they're almost hyper aware because they're 
They're aware of how they're being perceived when they walk into a room. So that's where I immediately go. Um, and when I started thinking about this, I was like, is that right? Um, am I, or, or is this where majority of people go? Cause I think they do. Mm -hmm. So, um, I sent out some text messages to, uh, a couple people, um, and hopefully some of you guys are listening. Um, <laughs> but it was a really random question. Just what I asked you there, Kev, of what do you, what do you visualize when you hear the word ego? So what's the visual? And it was out of the blue. Like I had not talked to this person that day or maybe that week. Um, but it was a random text to, to some of our members to be like, what do you think of, or what do you see when you hear the word ego? So the responses that came back were really cool because I think here I am thinking of this more egotistical type of personality, like arrogance and ignorant. Um, and then majority of people are, are sending back messages like eight, maybe eight out of 10 people all kind of went towards that like negative image mm -hmm. um, of an ego and uh, someone who's conceited. Um, it was very... There, there, there were a couple, I believe, that were almost neutral. Like they didn't label it as negative or positive, but they, um, they kind of looked at the polar ends of the spectrum, right? right. So, um, so why are we talking about ego? I think it's, uh, I think it's one of those concepts you hear a lot with the gym. Like people at the gym have a big ego, and <laughs> and it's it's often associated with that. So. Um, what's your, what's your take? Why, why do you want to talk about ego? What's the kind of the force behind that? Um, an ego, I like to talk about things that are misunderstood. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think an ego is right up there with one of the, the most misunderstood things. And, um, we'll, we'll start with people who are perceived as having quote unquote big egos, um, and when you, and it's a good question to ask what you picture when you picture ego, because even when you're, when, when you said, um, I'm picturing someone who's more egotistical, egotistical is just another way to describe, it's just another word of the root word ego, which right. is the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and someone who is egotistical, who has an ego, uh, a, a big ego, um, we generally picture that abrasive type of person, but that's more of a personality trait. It's not ego. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because so, so like to clear th things up and to, it's for all of us to get on the same page. Um, we should understand like the, the definition of it. So it's, um, I, I'm pretty sure that Freud, I think everyone knows Sigmund Freud. Um, he, he came up with, with the term ego, but it's, follow it the ego is comprised of two other things which we don't usually talk about we when we when we hear ego because um because ego uh it, it's it's kind of like a a word that becomes politically incorrect over mm -hmm. time yeah so yes um like i mean i'm guilty of it all the time because it seems like more and more words you are changing their meaning, but that's okay. Like, I mean, we're in a like society where we use slang and that slang gets the, the meaning gets changed over time. And I think e that's happened to ego under the radar big time from what it, what it's original to intention, um, from its original intention by Freud. So, uh, those two things that comprise the ego are the super ego and, and the ID. And really what those things are is your super, like to, to keep a long story, uh, a longer story, a little bit shorter, <laughs> um, a super ego is basically your conscience. Um, mm -hmm. and that's developed, um, through, uh, through nurture, um, over time th throughout a person's life from the time they're an infant until they're where they are today. Um, it, it's not really biological is not really like nature whereas the id is the the impulses that drive us mm. so that's um the um that's the more nature naturistic things like that used to serve us back in the day when like as a survival mechanism um we, we've heard a lot about those types of things but today they kind of get in our way um it's like when you're when you're sitting uh 
watching Netflix. This is like, I love describing the <laughs> impulses this way. When you're sitting watching Netflix and you don't have to do a thing, and but you do have to make a decision whether you shut it off and go to bed like you originally intended oh to, gosh. or you just don't do anything and just let it play the next episode and then you're sucked into another 50 minutes of, yeah. of Netflix. That's that's your ID playing at you, like just your impulses. Yeah. And I don't know how that would help you with survival in the past. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, it, it is what it is, right? And it's more of a, like when you're hungry, you want the instant gratification now. Yeah. So those two, and, and then you have your super ego saying, no, that's not good for you. And, blah, and then these two things are at odds, like the angel and devil on your shoulder um, that we see in the cartoon. Mm-hmm. Well, the ego is simply a representation of both of the outcome of both the idea and the super ego's argument, mm-hmm. right? So if you can picture them arguing within your own head, which happens like if you've ever been in the middle of a crazy workout, <laughs> the, the idea is saying, hey, put down that bar. You, you could just take a rest. Nobody cares. And then the the super ego is saying, no, 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 you, you were su- you're supposed to go unbroken. That's the game yeah, plan. Like, yeah. you know, and, and so you have these two thoughts in your head. And the ego is the is the outcome of that situation, but it's not under a microscope. So it's not one situation at a time. Your ego has a history. So that history um, of the outcome of those two things arguing each other, um, your your ego knows that history. So it knows what you're more likely to give into right. or to, to have discipline towards. Yeah. Um, and that's the projection of that is your ego. So really, long story short, ego is how you view yourself. Like, yeah, it's it's that simple. Um, it has a complex um, meaning or a complex um, way to get there. But um, and, and to like describe it and to understand it is, is kind of complex. But it's very, very simple concept, and um, and I think just human nature is is to make that simple thing a little bit more complex than it needs to be, um, and and then we attach people to this kind of like, um, this kind of misunderstood, misrepresented maybe um, uh, usage of the word. So mm-hmm. we think of the broad shoulder, big like dude walking into the gym, going like, "That's my bar. Those are my bag of peas," right? Um, <laughs> but. Uh, but ego happens um there's there's polars to it and, yes, and ego yeah. ego happens on on a big spectrum rather than just um an isolated type of person yeah and that's why asking people i was like is it just me it's probably not just me but majority of people go towards that um visual right um i read a book too over the uh, well i've read part of a book um over the lockdown that we had and it's called The Brave Athlete, Calm the Fuck Down and Rise to the Occasion. Um, and it talks about that, the conscience and thinking of it like you have, a. they label it as a chimp. Like in your brain, you have the chimp p- brain, the gym, chimp part of your brain, which is very reactive. And it's like the one who's like letting it roll into the next episode on Netflix and then you have the professor side of the brain and that's more analytical and it's 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 telling you the pros and cons of a situation and um, taking its time to, to think something through before reacting right away. So um, that just resonated with me because there's, I mean, we're always kind of in this battle um, between should I do that, should I not do that? Um, and we have these discussions over and over, whether we're at the gym and, like you said, with, with those uh, damn thrusters, if I should go unbroken. Um, but the, uh, yeah, the chimp side of the brain, professor side of the brain, and kind of off topic, but something, too, that resonated when I was reading this is the chimp is easier, like, it's easier to control your chimp through motivation than it is the professor. Um, so if you think of creating habits, right, like mm-hmm. it's easier to, that's why I think bad habits are so easy to pick up because it's like instant gratification and then that motivation of like, oh, but it's going to taste so sweet and good. I'm going to eat that chocolate bar. Mm. But to train the chimp to be like motivate it, use motivation as a tool to train. Oh my gosh, habits. This is going into a whole nother spectrum. Um, so I'm going to stop there. Yeah, but, but, but ego is all encompassing, right? Right. It's everything to do with yourself. 
Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I don't, I don't think that's a, and it, and it, those two things, um, that like playful chimp and the analytical professor both like are tugging at the, the, the puppet strings of the ego right? and not the other way around. Like, like the ego doesn't control those. They kind of control the ego more or less. Um, so yeah, I don't think yeah. it's off topic at all. Yeah. Um, do you think it's, so looking at CrossFit and here at the gym, um, what do you think is more common when it comes to the ego? Do you see more people, uh, I guess I can say with a big ego, do you see more people with that like hesitation in the gym environment or um, compared to on average in the gym? Do you see more um, or I guess um, like for me, when I see people come, say someone's new walking into the gym for the first time, um, do you see more of a big ego? Do you see more of that nervous Nelly style? Um well, yeah, I think we need to clarify that as well because uh, <laughs> so so two types of people, um, and these are personality traits, um, and and so you have your nervous Nelly who comes in, and they're a little bit intimidated. Um, they think that um, they it's hard for them to like to get going um, because within them is a little bit of maybe um like at the root of it I, I know they're not consciously thinking of this but they might be a little bit embarrassed they might be uh, like they might have been there might be a backstory there um there usually is of like something preventing them from working out for a really long time and they're just understandably like embarrassed or um maybe not under- just uncomfortable yeah right? uncomfortable like, yeah. just in an uncomfortable setting and situation yeah um but, mentally um and physically um but we all know after doing crossfit that like (laughs) man there's nothing really to be worried about physically we know that now in hindsight yeah so we have that ability to to uh, to let that person know hey there's nothing to be worried about but let me put it to you this way um public speaking everybody gets nervous most people i feel like who haven't who don't have a lot of experience with public speaking get very nervous public speaking. Um, and it's understandable. You're up on stage for everyone to watch yeah. you <laughs> and only you, if it's just you on stage, right? Like, um, and, <laughs> and, uh, so sorry, I gotta, uh, no, I'm, I'm laughing steps. here yeah. because <laughs> I'm like before Kevin and I re- record every podcast, <laughs> there's like two to three minutes maybe five where i'm just like totally in my head being like okay okay here we go how do i start (laughs) and it's that it's that voice i play over and i have to just shut shut it off but but you can't Um, that's the thing you can't shut it off yeah that's where i'm going there's that's where i'm going so if i if i was to tell you say i'm coaching you to be on this podcast and knowing you're going to speak in front of the 10 people that are listening <laughs> <laughs> who we can't see <laughs> <laughs> who we can't see or, yeah. or doesn't matter like you probably get just as nervous if you're speaking in front of thousands right yeah yeah, yeah. um and and maybe even more but if i was to tell you there's no reason to be nervous you're not going to get shot nothing that, will that help you in any way i it probably be in one ear out the other right like, yeah. you can't shut it off yeah. and why is that uh, cause I don't know what it, that is yet. Not why is that for you? Why is that for every single person who I guess oh. nervous public speaking? Um, cause we're nervous to, um, fuck up. We're nervous to make a mistake in front of others. Or... Right. But even when you think about that, think about yourself fucking up on stage from, from like above. Mm-hmm. It's still not justified to be that nervous where you're literally shaking and palms are sweating and yeah. like you're going into a battle to the right, death. Right, right. Like that's literally how we, we like a lot of people respond to that when and so it's it's a it's a separation from reality in the brain and mm-hmm. what you're doing there is you're allowing your ego to get in the way and the same person that's kind of meek in the gym might be a little bit uncomfortable, embarrassed to be there, um, a little bit like. Um, uh, you know what? I don't know if this is for me. Everyone's so strong and everyone like you're in your own head. You're in your own way. It's the same as, as public speaking, but as you just, you have to go through that discomfort yeah. and come out on the other side with your own hindsight 
Um, and, and to these people, if, if I develop a strong enough relationship with them and I get to know who they are a little bit, the best thing you can say to them from my experience is <laughs> nobody cares about you <laughs> because what's, what's the biggest thing is they feel like they're on a stage, uh, because they're in the middle of the gym and they feel like everyone's watching them, but everyone's ego is, yeah, yeah. All, is, is preventing them from watching that person. They're all yeah. too focused on themselves. So, um, and which is good. That's why the ego is good because it keeps you fixated on, um, and focused, right? So Mm -hmm. do you take a really focused person? Yeah, they have an ego. um, But I wouldn't view the ego as a big personality. A big personality is a big personality, not a big ego. Right. It's just a big personality. Um, Maybe that big personality has a big ego or maybe they just lack confidence. They're trying to make up for something. (laughs) But for me, uh, when somebody typically coins the big ego, quote unquote, they... um, there, I, I like to think of it more as like a heavy ego and that way we can start to see that they're, um, they're, they're just, they're in their own way. Um, and, and their, their emotions more specifically are, are blocking them from performing whatever the, whether it's public speaking, um, putting everything they have into like learning some technique in a workout. Um, it, it's like, the yeah. CrossFit gyms have it all the time, like check your ego at the door. I don't think that means, well, I don't, I think some of them mean it this way, but I don't mean it as like a coat check where you leave your ego at the door because <laughs> you have to bring it with you. I think it's like, keep it in check. Like, like you're, it sounds harsh, but you're not that important. You're there to do, a, uh, to make yourself better. That's it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and the re- that's the reality of the of the situation when it comes to ego. So I talked a lot about the meek person because I want you, everybody everybody to understand that um, that person you're thinking of when you picture ego with the, like the broad shoulders and the spiky hair and whatever you <laughs> else you want to call they it. They have spiky um, hair now. Whatever, like <laughs> like like the the Vin Diesel sunglasses on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that person on that side. There's also someone with just as heavy of an ego on the other side from a meek standpoint and and it's a spectrum um so an ego is just how you view yourself and maybe you don't think you should be in a place like that but maybe that's the exact place you need to be in order to get where you want to go um and and it's just your own self-identification your ego that's standing in the way Mm mm-hmm do you think it's necessary to be conscious of your ego in your sport or in your in training and crossfit like only if it's getting in the way i think you need to recognize if you're your own worst enemy um so and and i've talked a lot about your ego getting in the way we told some stories but here's the here's the reality of it like um when you when you doubt yourself to to an extent where it's not true in reality or you over overestimate yeah. yourself yeah. where it's not true in the sense of like the reality, yeah. then that's when we have a heavy ego. So, and that's when it becomes a problem for an athlete that they're, and not necessarily a problem that they have to avoid one that they have to pursue and understand. Um, so, so to me, uh, having, um, a, a heavy ego as an athlete. Um, so weighing, a making like yourself, uh, like a big important thing. Um, from a, from a boastful perspective or a meek perspective, um, because the, the shyness is, is a form of, of that as well. Um, it can be, um, if you're, if you're so much that way, like, sorry, you're putting such a importance on yourself. That's beyond the scope of reality. Um, that's when you have that heavy ego. So, so if you are routinely surprised by the outcomes in your life and in reality, like you expect one mm-hmm, thing mm-hmm. and you constantly get delivered by life another thing, odds are your ego is probably pretty heavy. And But to learn from that, we need to address the ego and start to understand ourselves a little bit better. And then it becomes a very like non-pressured approach to like to the learning process. Right. 
if you're the type of person that's like, no, like generally what I expect when I look, when I'm looking at myself, um, generally what I expect is, is what comes like I'm pretty realistic. Then I don't think you need to really worry about your ego at all. But, Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. I do think it's obviously worth talking about specifically for athletes or Mm -hmm. anyone trying to, um, self-improve. Right. And like competing, like I think for, um, like I don't want to say is the ego good or bad, uh, because I know I feel like I know how you'd answer that. But <laughs> um, <laughs> is the ego necessary, um, in your opinion, to compete in sports or like? I'm oh. gonna I'm gonna be a, a little bit of a annoying oh, douche here, and I'm gonna answer <laughs> your question with a question. Mm. Um, is the ego necessary to? Sorry, it, sorry. I don't. I want to. I want to rephrase that okay <laughs> <laughs> is having a heavy ego having a big ego do you think that's necessary to compete in crossfit oh or okay. a pro okay so, or so a con. Uh, necessary let's say necessary so is having a heavy ego um necessary to compete mm-hmm. uh no i think it's the opposite i think it gets in the way having a heavy ego, but I think trying to erase the ego is also just as bad. Like, cause the ego is your, you have to have a view on yourself. You have to have expectations in order to compete. If we're talking about competition, you have to have expectations. And, and, uh, the person who says it's all about the journey, it's, it's not about the destination. Um, that's a self lie right there. And you're deceiving your, like, your, your ego is deceiving you or you're deceiving your ego, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Um, um, because it, it's, it is about the destination and every sense of, of the meaning, not to say that it's only about the destination. Right. Um, I think any, if we learn from, from, from the greatest of all time, I think any athlete, any person who did anything worth being called the greatest of all time will tell you they thoroughly enjoyed the journey so yeah it's imperative that you enjoy the journey and you 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 um embrace fully the process but you can't lose the destination along the way if if like that's like a lot of people will go through on and they have expectations on a certain destination like i want to be a crossfit games champ but along the way they're like like they get rerouted because they realize their their ego is actually gets checked and they're like that's not going to happen, <laughs> but maybe they find, um, that they get so interested in like, I don't know, the equipment of that they, we use in CrossFit and they develop a company like Rogue Fitness, right? Right. right? Like, and, and that's like, um, a way of, of, of an, or an example of maybe having a destination in your head, but also being flexible with it based on what your ego is telling you and keeping in tune with actual reality um and and i'm not saying don't pursue your dreams and stick to them obviously um <laughs> obviously you can learn a lot from that too and, and it's good uh, but there is a breaking point and and i think a lot of people um yeah, I, I, yeah. it's a tough question like it's a yeah, good question because i don't know if there's a right answer because there's a lot of athletes that might benefit from yeah. ha- even having a heavy ego and that's like they they overestimate themselves continually. Um, Cause I feel like having, having a, having a big ego, um, in my opinion, I feel like that would benefit you. It would give you, it would maybe put you in a position to take risk or to um, try something that you have kind of like that blind faith that I can do this and, and puts you in that situation to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, so in, I feel like it, it's beneficial, um, but with more risk comes reward, but also maybe failure. I don't know. No, no. I, but think, like, I think you're accurate, but I, 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 think it's, um, I think it's more so for a beginner. So like when – put it in reality. So when Matt Frazier is a beginner – he needs a big ego to yeah. like to, and that's a bad example. Cause he, pre- he did, it was other people like coaxing him into it. I think from, from what I gather from his story, but like, any, anyone like you need to have that kind of beginner 
like big jump. ego mentality like, to, to make, to take those risks. Yeah. But, but if you keep that big ego, you won't go very far. It's going to be, it's going to get in the way big time. Like right. it's going to, you're going to go grab the peas when you should have grabbed the corn <laughs> um, because you think you need those peas. And I hope you can get that analogy, but um, like it's, it is, and it might be hard to see, but my point is it, it'll work, I think, to get you started because like we, um, and, and, but, but maybe not because maybe it prevents you from getting started because you, maybe you're that other type of personality who is a big ego but shies away because of their big ego. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so I think it's important to understand that, um, to understand what's happening in reality to our ego and, and, and someone who thinks that all the CrossFit Games competitors are not as fit as they are. <laughs> right. And they haven't, right. and they've only, they've only done CrossFit for two months. Um, to me, that's, that's a, that's a inflated ego of, of somebody who really needs to put that in check. But at the same time, someone who thinks they could never ever do CrossFit at all. Yeah. Because they're not, x like pick your excuse Mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. that's also a big ego um and i mean and that's when this gets complex because we have so many different personalities and emotions and they complex the situation so um to I, i i would say that i would try to avoid um having a skewed perception of reality if you're an athlete, I would try to really be pragmatic about the process. And if you're an athlete of any kind, I would say that you need to have a, as clear of a perception of reality as possible. Um, or else you'll, you will get in your own way right. if it's too skewed. So, so I, I disagree ultimately with that. Um, with, with the notion that like a big ego will help because I think in the long run it only hurts. Um, but to understand that you do have an ego, um, is number one. And number two, we haven't touched on this. Um, recognizing you have an ego is one thing. The other thing is we talked about, um, having a big ego is like being removed really far from reality. So if 10% of how you view yourself is actually true in reality and 90% is false, I would call that a huge, um, a huge like misstep in uh with with your ego whether you want to call it heavy big whatever um but we do also have to realize that we could have our ego like fully in check thinking about it all the time but we still will not have 100 percent of our expectations met with reality nobody is 100 percent um into 100 uh, percent expectation to reality like right, nobody right. because that's what makes us individuals our biases we yeah, are all yeah. biased and whether we're 98 percent like of our of our expectations match up with reality there's still that two percent that doesn't and and that 98 percent is very biased into whatever whatever we we're, we're at in our life right so mm-hmm. i think it's really under like to really swallow and and like understand and digest that ego um, that we all have. I think it's very important to understand that I am a biased person. There's nothing I can do about that. Um, but all I can do is try to pursue um, and relate as much of who I am as a person to reality and what's happening in reality. Um, and I'm talking from a competitor standpoint mm-hmm. because, and that's why I love the barbell because I, I forget who famously said this, but it was a power lifter, 200 pounds is always 200 pounds the iron never lies and yeah it's so true right that's the we're we're faced with ultimate reality when we when we're in the gym yeah and that's why people will will have their ego checked when they are here Mm -hmm. right so Mm -hmm. yeah so this is this is where it's like i when i first started thinking of it it's okay ego and then it's just layer after layer, right and I think the more you look into it, then the more you read and podcast and, oh my God, there's so much material out there on this, um, that it just becomes so complex. Uh, but yeah, like at the end of the day, um, I think being aware and you know, that like you said, like check your ego at the door, but like taking that time to think about it and 
kind of see where you fall on the spectrum. Um, it's not like a must, obviously, to um, to train, but I don't know. I don't know. I, in the past two weeks, thinking about this, I've probably overthought it to the point <laughs> of uh, exhaustion. But um, yeah, any anything else to add, Kev? Or yeah, no, I, I just I just think like don't overthink this stuff. <laughs> don't like. <laughs> um, <laughs> Like, it is what it is. Try to take a little nugget from it and, like, understand maybe where you fall on the spectrum and then and then try to learn from it. And yeah. That's, that's the least egotistical thing you could do is mm. always be learning. Mm. I think that's that's the one the one value uh, that we have of virtuosity. Um, virtuosity is an ego killer because in order to pursue, mm-hmm. like, mastering a craft, when, when a lot of people might view that as um, – as an egotistical thing to do to try to become a master in something it means you're trying to become better than others and it's not egotistical to compete maybe in a way maybe but it depends what fuels you and i think the act and process of attempting to master um is an ego killer because to make that progress um your your ego will start to um, condense and become less heavy and weighted on you and you will become freer to pursue things and to learn and grow. Um, it'll always be there, um, because it's necessary because you need to expect from yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but it, what will happen when it'll, it'll be less at odds with, um, with the reality and, uh, that, that 200 pounds being 200, you won't think it's 400 pounds. And you won't think it's 100 pounds. You'll know that it's 200 pounds and, and it'll be able to help you that much more as an athlete when you're dialing in your, uh, dialing in your performances, um, further. I don't, like I said, some gyms use like check your ego at the door. I don't like that because Mm -hmm. it, it makes the assumption that what we do in the gym stays in the gym when I really, really believe that what we do in the gym transcends the oh, gym for sure. and, mm-hmm. and we like, this is the place of utter truth. You can do yeah. a pull up or you can't, that's the reality. Yeah. And your ego tells you different things about it. Um, maybe reasons why you can't or reasons why you can. Um, but you can do a pull up or you can't. And that's from the athlete's perspective and the coach's perspective with programming and right. Um, mm-hmm. but without getting to, two down that that <laughs> part and to wrap this up i think um i think the the biggest takeaway is like like this is the ultimate truth grounds the yeah. all, that's this is where reality happens and if your expectations aren't lining up it's good practice to bring with you outside of the gym as as it um for um the term ego and and to kind of help you kind of have uh, more expectations that are in line with what you're actually doing Mm -hmm. awesome all right thank you kev